and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. There was a time not too long ago that the words cancer and survivor did not go in the same sentence. Today, through education, research, and technology, survivorship rates for many types of cancer are climbing. And with those successes comes a critical need for ongoing help and support for survivors. There's a new organization in Vermont that's dedicated to supporting cancer survivors. We're going to spotlight Survivorship Now. To learn more, I'm joined by two guests from Survivorship Now. It is a pleasure to welcome Linda Dyer and Susie McNamara. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having us. Susie, why don't you start off by talking a little bit about what Survivorship Now is all about. Survivorship Now is a local cancer wellness center created by cancer survivors for cancer survivors and it's for cancer survivors of all types. There are no limitations. It's not just breast cancer. It's not just for women. It's for men. It's for all types. Why is there a need for this kind of an organization? The biggest thing is when, when a patient comes from out of the treatment center, they, there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do, they're just alone. And what we do is we provide wellness, nutrition classes, anything to get them back on their feet and just join that camaraderie with others. Mm -hmm. And so Linda, a lot of people recognize you as one of the founders of Dragon Heart Vermont and of course the hugely successful Dragon Boat Festival on Lake Champlain. Can you t just remind our viewers what that's all about? Sure. Um, Dragon Heart Vermont is a breast cancer survivor and supporter Dragon Boat team here in town. We're going to be starting our 10th season of paddling, which is so exciting. But we began as a, a breast cancer, a floating uh, breast cancer support group where our focus was not on cancer, but it was on living and living life as, as well as you can. Uh, so we have been uh, paddling together not only for the, the fun and the fitness and the camaraderie, but we've gotten pretty darn good at it too. <laughs> we went off to the World Championships last year. Right. Uh, so it's, it's pretty exciting. But what we learned through this is that we were pretty lucky to have what we had, and we wanted to be able to uh, share this with other cancer survivors in the area. And uh, two years ago, we really felt there was a gap, an unfortunate gap in services for cancer survivors that um, treatment in this area is excellent. And, um, but when you finish treatment, it's really... So long, see you later. <laughs> right. And it's really just the beginning of your recovery. And so we felt that there was a need to have this ongoing support um, plan in place to help people really live the best quality of life they could in mm -hmm. whatever time they have left. And so one of the things with Dragonheart is that you raise a lot of money and you, you pick a, a charity every year. And so this was, this is sort of the connection with, with the funding. Yes, so uh, Dragonheart has raised o over a million dollars for our Lake Champlain Dragon Boat Festival. Our uh, community has embraced our festival. so. And half that money, $660,000, has gone right back into our Burlington community for cancer support. Two years ago, we decided to begin Survivorship Now to start our wellness center. And the, the festival has helped us to open the doors and to start this free programming for all cancer survivors. So we're so fortunate to have uh, the people that are involved, our sponsors, our donors, our, our racers, uh, involved in the Lake Champlain Dragon Boat Fel Festival to help us to, to really get this program going. Let's talk a little bit about the need. What is it? I mean, I guess there's so much focus on, you know, once you're diagnosed, the treatment aspect of it. I guess you don't really stop to think about what happens next. It's, if you don't no, mind taking this. No, please, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, uh, the returning to a normal life is is challenging. When you get the diagnosis, you think that's hard enough to deal with the diagnosis and deal with the year or so of treatment, but it, it, it is part of a lifelong uh, challenge that you're going to have to deal with. And to uh, do this, you really need to depend on your family, your friends, your, the professionals in the community to do it. So our, we've created this network on wellness where we've taken these wonderful people in the community who are uh, yoga instructors and nutritionists and uh, people who uh, have experience dealing with cancer survivors and they've been willing to offer their services to create these amazing classes for us. So Susie, what kind of classes are offered? We have a wide variety. As Linda said, there's fitness and nutrition in particular. There's building strength and fitness. We have some cardio workouts as well. We have amazing yoga classes that uh, Lisa Tidman from PT360 uh, helps us out with. Uh, we have nutrition from Whole Health Nutrition, all different types of foods that people should be eating and how to prepare them. They may not be their normal foods, but great choices. Um, managing stress and fatigue. 
lymphedema, all kinds of cancer-related medical staff come in and address different issues, and just anything to make people well. We have healthy living cooking classes. We have healthy living. Uh, Hands-on cooking classes at healthy living. and We have some so art classes, yeah. just at watercolor art classes that really just help people. It's amazing what those art classes bring out with the final product. Mm -hmm. It also too helps to connect folks, which is really important. It, it's truly important because they, the studies have shown that people, cancer survivors, that do connect with other people, whether it's through a support group or through uh, classes like ours, it actually extends your survival rate. So what a simple thing you can do to, to give yourself a, a better chance of living as long as you can possibly live. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about some of the, the folks that you hear from that, that enroll in the classes. What do you, what do you hear from One people? One of my favorite stories is a local 80-year-old lady who heard about us in Vermont Maturity, and her name is Phyllis. And she mentioned that her 91-year-old brother, who was very active, skis uh, out and about all of the time, said, you've got to get moving, you know, get living. And she, came, she called me because she didn't have a computer. And, you know, we sat down, I had her come into the office, sat down, explained the process. She showed up to one of our art classes and created these beautiful painting. And she called me back the other day and said, I want to do more. And I've missed you. And that's one little story. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And so once, um, maybe you could talk a little bit about your personal experiences with cancer, because I know this is how this all started with both of you. Right. Uh, oh, I am a breast cancer survivor and will celebrate my 20th anniversary of Congratulations. being cancer-free in June, which is uh, quite a marker when you're first diagnosed. You can't even imagine making it to year one and worrying about uh, the, the fear factor in, in cancer is huge. So to reach my 20 year mark, having uh, 20 years ago not knowing one cancer survivor, to ironically now almost everybody in my life <laughs> is a cancer survivor and my greatest friend. It has expanded my, my life in so many ways that I never could have imagined uh, 20 years ago. Um, so uh, my experience was being 39 years old, not knowing anybody that had cancer and uh, knowing that there was a need to connect with other people to help uh, someone who's been down that road before I started a cancer um, a support group back when I was first diagnosed and for eight years we met, had a great time, but we spent all our time focusing on cancer. So when we uh, moved up here ten years ago, I just knew that there was maybe a different way of dealing with this and I, I really felt it was through activity and through uh, adding the fun factor, <laughs> the fitness factor in there, and that's where dragon boating came in. But we also realized mm -hmm. that even though we've got a wonderful thing with dragon boating, it isn't for every, everybody. Right. So that's why Survivorship Now offers uh, so many opportunities. We've got something for every, everybody. We, our, our schedule of programs change, changes month to month, so there ought to be something on there that that's, uh, interests uh, our cancer survivors out there. And how about you, Susie? My mother is actually a breast cancer survivor, and a couple years ago we were, um, I received a call from my mom saying, would you come to the breast care conference that was held at the Sheridan here in Burlington? And when I lived, I lived in Maryland when I got the call from my mom. And so I wasn't here for the support. I came up for the surgery, but wasn't here for the actual process. So when she invited me to participate I was just open-armed, whatever I could do. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up at the um, breast care conference, and my mother, being a retired nurse, opened up the agenda and said, what would you like to go do or see? And I said, well, Mom, this is about you, whatever you would like. And so she says, well, there's this paddling or rowing thing going on, <laughs> and I'm intrigued. The dragon so, boat thing. So let's go check it out. And um, so we ended up at two of Linda's presentations, and my mother turned to me after the presentation and said, would you like to try this? And I said, yes. And um, whatever mom wanted to do, and whatever, if there's a sport, I want to play it. So um, we joined the next year. And since then, it's just developed. And when Dragonheart Vermont was in Hong Kong, you posted the position for survivorship now. And I couldn't think of a better place to be than to work with people that want to get well and healthier and happier, and that's what we do. It's a very upbeat, 
just great place to go and be and get stronger and healthier and enjoy the, the new friends that you meet. Well, we're going to take a moment now to hear from some of the cancer survivors who are involved with Survivorship Now. Yeah, when you are diagnosed with cancer, you get some information, and if you're like many of us, you look things up on the internet now, but you know, 30 years ago I looked, I bought a book. And you know, there's stuff about, oh, should you do chemo or not? You know, you're going to do radiation. And then you finish treatment. And the information stops. That's it, you're done. And the information to go beyond that about fitness and the effect it has on, on decreasing cancer, about nutrition, and about activity, and all these things and how they fit into your life. And that's important, but it also is a chance to learn more about ways to enjoy life, to get more out of life, and to build a camaraderie and a support group that isn't just sitting there and talking about, well, how are you feeling this week? But about, let's all go for a bike ride. Uh, let's learn about a way to cook more meals that are healthier. Let's learn about a way to travel if you have lymphedema and might have trouble on airplanes. And addressing uh, many of the things, the fatigue that people feel that other people don't see. You look fine. Why are you tired? And to experience that with a group of people who feel the same things is priceless. I was not put into any support group. I didn't know anything about support groups. Um, I had the best care, there's no question about it, but I never heard that there was an opportunity to talk with anyone about my situation. I know people with other kinds of cancer and how supportive it is to be in a group that understands what you specifically are going through and help you kind of make your way day to day, year to year. Having a place to go, such as Survivorship Now, to talk with others who, who understand about how the chemo felt or how, how you feel after surgery, especially if you've lost a, a breast or, or, or some other uh, surgical procedure in your cancer, Having someone else to talk to um, about feeling of loss, because there's a part of you that really grieves and for that loss, uh, for that difference. You're, you're someone else now. I just felt so much better. Uh, just part of the exercise, but just looking at everyone else's faces and knowing that I didn't have to explain anything to anyone. They just got it. and. I just feel so lucky to have that in my life. Survivorship now is, is going to be fun. And I'm already participating in group exercises throughout the winter, in aquatic classes, in um, circuit training classes, in hikes. Uh, I look forward to snowshoeing, um, dinners out. It's, it's an incredible bonding experience that um, we can take the time to enjoy life and move forward. I don't dwell on the past. I don't think about my cancer diagnosis. I think about living life to its fullest with these great, wonderful, loving people. I'd like to thank Survivorship Now for sharing those voices with us. So, Susie, who can take part in Survivorship Now? Any cancer survivor, male, female, anyone that wants to just get healthier. There's no limitation. And so how does someone take part in classes or find out about the classes? Just simply go to our website, www.survivorshipnowvt.org, and our phone number is 802-777-1126. Feel free to call that number. I'll be happy to get you set up. Okay. And um, just a couple of minutes remaining, I want to remind, um, about, remind us about the focus of Survivorship Now. I know that there are five different components or six different components. Well, we have exercise, nutrition, connection, service and joy, education, and which one am I missing? What did we miss? <laughs> Spirit, joy, education, nutrition, connection, and service. Service, service. there we go. I, and I think I loved watching that particular video because everyone was just talking about how much fun they're having. 
And really, a, a positive attitude and having joy in your life is really the secret of life, whether you're a cancer survivor or not. And, and that's what we are kind of uh, trying to embrace w with our programs. Uh, one thing I did want to mention that our programs are op open to caretakers if we do have room. So for particularly for a new survivor who uh, has never exercised before and is unsure of themselves, it's, it's an easy thing for them to uh, come if they're coming with somebody <laughs> else. So if there's room in the class, we do allow uh, uh, the caretakers to come as well. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us today. It's a great program. Mm. Thank, thank you, you for Judy. having us. That's our time for today. I'll see you next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.